in a lot of scenarios, the men get to um, have a comeback and the women don't. Um, and, you know, I don't necessarily want to make this a man versus a woman sure. thing, but in a lot of situations, the women get stuck with a stigma and cannot get away from it. I mean, what are you most then looking forward to when people watch this documentary and listen to what you have to say? What are you most looking forward to them finding out about your story? Um, I'm looking forward to people seeing um, how much work um, these guys put into the documentary. I think they're unbelievable. Um, and I'm also really looking forward to people um, seeing the role that the media played mm -hmm. um, in blaming other people. I'm looking forward to, to people seeing the role of the media. Yeah. Do you, feel, do you feel like the media put most of the blame on you? I feel like the media put a lot of blame on me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that had to be- And I think it was before, listen, it was before the hashtag Me Too movement. Um, it was before social media for the most part. Um, it was, I, I think people forget how badly I was treated yeah. and um, the things that people really did for to me and that I couldn't go anywhere. And I was blamed for a lot of stuff and I still, um, for 10 years, I've lived with that same scrutiny. I cannot go places without people still talking to me that same way. I, I don't think people really realize that, that I'm still uh, treated that same way. And people act like um, that was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. it, people don't treat me much different. I'm not sure why um, in a lot of scenarios, the men get to, um, have a comeback and the women don't um and you know i don't necessarily want to make this a man versus a woman sure. thing but in a lot of situations the women get stuck with a stigma and cannot get away from it and um and the and they just get pigeonholed in this thing and the the comments of homewrecker mistress um slut whore and the blame just get put on you and you can't get away from that. And for 10 years, I haven't been able to get away from that. And um, uh, I, I, frankly, the only, um, you know, uh, people that need to be apologized to are a very small group of people. It's two people, right? Um, so yet the world wants to blame me. And it's a very interesting thing um, to have hatred from people that I've never personally heard sure. and I've never personally met and these people haven't personally met me. So it's a very interesting thing to have such uh, strong opinions about me from people that don't know me, but people act like they know me. And to this day to um, as recently as last night to, <laughs> to read on my Instagram or um, you know, uh, from, from people that, um, just are not, um, have never met me, but act like they think they know me is, um, is not, is not a fair way, um, for people to assess me and, um, and it's not a nice way to, to go through life. No, I can't imagine. Do you feel like you're going to be vindicated after people watch what you have to say? Um, no, I mean, um, but I needed to speak for me, you know, it's, it's one way to get the shackles off of um, me, you know, it's, it's one way for me to get rid of the shame, right? Um, and for me to feel like I get to speak regardless of what people think. Um, so it was for me, That's quite great. frankly. Yeah. I don't know that it will change people's opinion, but I would hope that maybe it brings to the forefront um, that maybe there will be a conversation about how the media treat people, how the public blames other people, um, and um, maybe there will be a conversation to be had a little bit about um, perception versus reality and blame a little bit. Um, maybe people will have a little bit more empathy. Maybe people will tone it down. I'm not sure, but for me, I just needed to, 
to finally tell my story once and for all. Right. Had had you ever gotten an apology from Tiger after everything? I can't talk about that. You mentioned before about him, you know, how men and women are treated differently. Is it frustrating at times to see him kind of rebound and kind of almost, you know, obviously he went through some things, but kind of pick up almost where he left off and you have been dealing with this for 10 years with, you know, you say, still say people talk to you on the streets about this and, you know, he's kind of living his life to his fullest. Um, I, I'm, I'm not going to talk about him specifically, but I will talk about that, um, you know, it's, it's a very common thing to see that, um, you know, uh, men in situations tend to get to move on very quickly and yeah. women, um, you know, never get to, to move on. They always seem like they have a much harder time moving on. And it is hard that the men get to have the comebacks very easily and the women um, al always <laughs> in most situations seem to be the ones that get the stigma. Yeah. And I won't speak for other people. I will speak for me sure. that people have um, not let it go with me. Um, and I find that in for 10 years, I have been um, labeled as as these names. And it was finally time for me to stand up uh, to the media, to the um, public, to everyone that doesn't know me and say that I'm more than that. Um, and that it's my public persona, that it's my private persona, that like, I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. And you know, I made a mistake, but it's actually none of anybody's business besides the people that were involved. Yeah. And um, you know, I'm sorry that everybody hates me, but like, there's no reason to really uh, be so angry with me. Right. Um, you know, cause I'm not really a hateable person.